YouTubers, anti-nuke activist Hatrick Penry here. <clears throat> Good morning. It is the 10th of November, 7.30 a.m. Check out a little something I found in the 507 pager. You'll, you'll find that's interesting. Jack, and this is Jack's go, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's not Jack's go. Hold on, let me back up. No, it'd say Jack's go if it was Jack's go. So that's not, that's between Fred, Chuck, and uh, someone named Jack. Okay, Jack, okay, and then the last thing has to do with your team. My sense is that you've gotten about six hours of sleep since you landed, and you guys are going to be there for the long haul. And I was wondering, are you getting into some sort of predictable rotation where folks are getting rest? And do you have the right people there? Do you need different people? Because we're planning on sending the next wave over, the next tsunami of responders. I apologize for that. The next wave over, and we want to make sure it's the right people at the right time. Do you have any thoughts on that? Okay, they're getting tired. They need replacements to come over and replace these key individuals. That's the thrust of this conversation. Chuck, yes, what I'd like to do is each of the people that are over here, I would like for them to give me a list or look at the list and tell me who they think is the best person to replace them. Most people know somebody at their talent level in the agency, so I would give everybody a chance to wait on give me a recommendation. And then we'd map that together with your list and make sure we're comfortable with the people we're sending. So this morning I was going to ask the team here to come up with two or three names or we could have them look at your list and say, hey, this is a good person, that's a good, that's the right person, whatever. Jack, yes, I wouldn't spend too much time on that. What I'm most concerned about, we'll find the right people. What I'm most concerned about is the expertise. Do you have the right expertise? Do you have the Chuck? Jack, inaudible, concerned about, saying, we're concerned about who comes over with the expertise and the skill sets and the diplomacy. It's more you can't just say, hey, we need a severe accident guy and Joe is the best severe accident guy. There's a lot, huge political element to this. So it's got to be somebody with diplomacy skills. Okay, let's stop right there. What they're essentially saying here, diplomacy skills, that's someone who's willing to keep their mouth shut. That's someone who's willing to participate in the cover-up. You not only need to have expertise in the BWR1 reactor and criticality events and all that kind of stuff, you've also got to be trustworthy that you'll keep your mouth shut because they don't want someone coming over there, getting involved, and then running their mouth to a reporter or talking to someone who's going to write an article or talking to someone who's going to do a video or talking to someone who's going to let the information out. It's pretty clear in this little exchange right here. They don't want anyone new into the, into the group, the personnel, that's not going to be trustworthy enough to keep their mouth shut when critical damaging information comes to light. Fact! It's really that simple, folks. So that's what I want to show you. This is how they're, they're controlling the information. This is how the cover-up went down. And that's why we didn't get notified about the plume and over 40,000 deaths. Please follow my articles. And I got a bunch of YouTube videos. And I do a blog talk radio show, The Muga Report, where we talk about the freedom of information. NRC for you documents pertaining to Fukushima and just sort of little exchanges like this that show you beyond any reasonable doubt fascism is not going to warn you of an industrial accident. Okay, just get that out of your head. All right, Patrick Penry, over and out. Have a nuclear free day if possible.